There's a lot of believers who gave their life to Christ, but they have not stepped out to receive the gift of speaking in tongues. A lot of them don't believe they need to speak in tongues. Just so you know, I'm going to tell you straightforward. Speaking in tongues does not... It's not a heaven or hell issue. I don't believe it is. I don't believe that just because you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. You didn't give your life to Christ. You didn't sincerely say, Lord, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. And that you, I don't believe that just because you don't speak in tongues, you're not going to heaven. I don't believe that. However, however, I do believe that, uh, that it is a gift that's freely given to all of us. But we have to have that desire to want to speak in tongues. Now, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 2, or, you know, where the day of Pentecost, everyone in the upper room spoke in tongues. Everyone. All believers spoke in tongues. Not one of them did not. I'm not sure why this subject is so offensive to many who do not speak in typically it's many who don't speak in in tongues it's not everyone but some people are desiring to get the gift but they've never received it they're still contending they're still trying to get it they just they can't step past that threshold of actually receiving it speaking in tongues my belief is very much like all military have a discount right here in san antonio they have military discounts almost everywhere this is a military city. We have so many bases here. So you can go to SeaWorld, and if you're active duty military member, you can receive a discount there. Let's just say somewhere around the price of normally a SeaWorld ticket is roughly 60 to 80 dollars, right? Let's just say 80 bucks. I'm not sure. Six Flags is roughly 60 to 80 dollars a ticket, right? Um, Six Flags and SeaWorld, you can receive a military discount if you are military. You show your ID, your identification, and same thing is in the body in the kingdom of God. You have that. You have that discount. You can, you don't have to pay full price as long as you ask for that discount and show your credentials, right? The same thing in the body of Christ. You would show that you have an identity in Christ. You say, Lord, I give my life to you. Your word says that anyone who asks for this shall receive it. Right? And so I'm asking you in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you for this, for the gift of tongues. There is speaking in, that's my tongue. Yours might sound different if you receive it or maybe you already have it. And so I say this because a lot of people are so divided in the issue. Now, there is an evidence, the Bible does say there is an evidence that you have the Holy Spirit by speaking in tongues. That is true. However, however, it does not say that if you don't speak in tongues, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. That part, I don't, I don't, I don't read that anywhere. It does say that there is an evidence and these signs will follow. Jesus says that in Mark chapter 16. These signs will follow those who follow me. They'll speak in new tongues. Jesus said it himself. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll cast out demons. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. These are the things that the Bible talks about. Now, a lot of times people will say that's not important because... The other part that Mark chapter 16 says that if you touch a serpent and a poisonous snake or whatever and it bites you, you won't die. Now, that's not to say that you go and try to tempt the Lord thy God and go looking for venomous snakes to try to bite you. That's not what that's that's I don't believe that that's what that scripture means. <laughs> This was Pastor Jamie Coots three months ago, doing what his father and grandfather did before him in this tiny church in rural Kentucky. Risking his life to praise the Lord with poisonous snakes. I know it's life or death every day. I realize that. I choose that. I believe this is what the Bible means. 
Kutz and his followers believe they are called by God to handle venomous serpents. It comes from a passage from the Bible, which they take literally. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. Later on in, in, in the book of Acts, I think Paul was the one who got bit by a snake, a venomous snake. And he was preaching or he was in a native with a lot of native people and so he they, it bit him and he didn't die that's a clear example of what that scripture was referring to uh of course paul didn't go looking for snakes he didn't go looking for the cobra he didn't go looking for these things but if if it were to bite you you will not die that's what the bible says okay so have i ever experienced that part no most people have not we don't go looking for snakes or venomous things to try to see if we're going to get sick and die. That's not what we do. The Bible just says if you were to get uh, bitten by the cobra or bitten by snakes, venomous snake, you, you won't die. Okay? So, anyways, let's just go back to speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. A lot of times people have a problem with this because... They don't speak in tongues because they've never stepped out by faith to desire it, to receive it, or maybe they have and it didn't work. A lot of times what I notice is people who are big thinkers, they think a lot, they have a hard time receiving the gift of tongues. People who are very knowledgeable, very well educated, they think, they think things through, they're trying to, their mind gets in the way of the faith of speaking in tongues. It's just a common thing. I'm not saying that they can't do it. It's just some that takes a little longer than others. They think too much. They're thinking it through. They're trying to reason with it. Their faith takes trusting in God. And with the trust, there's a spiritual aspect. You're stepping into the realm of like a portal, if you will, when you have faith in God. You're, you're literally saying, here's a portal, if you will. This is faith. And I'm on this side of the faith of the fence of faith, but I'm going to step out by faith on the jump over the fence and trust God. And I'm going to trust God to catch me. That's kind of that's faith. I'm trusting because God said he's on the other side and he's going to catch me. I'm not telling you to go jump a fence. I'm just giving you an analogy of what faith is. Faith is like this wall right here. It's a, it's a line right here. And most believers, a lot of big bulk of Christian believers are always staying on this side of the fence and they don't ever jump and take that leap of faith the first my belief the first the first seed of faith in any believer is speaking in tongues that's just my belief i'm not saying that i'm not saying that is it because the bible doesn't tell you that but i just believe that because in the book of acts the first thing you see people do is speak in tongues a lot of people it talks about speaking in tongues. And then after that, they let you see them doing miracles, signs, and wonders. Again, in my experience too, as well, is the first experience I ever had before I started doing, praying for people, seeing miracles, seeing people get healed, seeing people get, uh, seeing demons get casted out was speaking in tongues.